Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at beam deflection with a triangular load using the discontinuity method. So, um, it's also a cantilevered beam, which is important to note. So, before we even do anything here, let's just kind of think about what's going on in this problem. So, we have a cantilevered beam, right? So, cantilevered beam at the wall, what are our boundary conditions going to be? Right, so at the wall, this beam can't move up and down here. So we're going to say at x equals zero, which is the x value where the wall is, that the deflection is going to be equal to zero. So that's that y value. And also, so this cantilevered beam at x equals zero, the slope is going to be equal to zero. So we can say that this beam, when we apply the load to it, is going to deflect. So it's not going to move at the wall, right? And there's going to be zero slope there, but then it's going to start to deflect this way. And so our goal is to find um, this y value here. So how much that beam deflects. And another thing we need to think about is what our support reactions are going to be, right? So we're going to have an ay, an ax, and then we're also going to have a moment here. So that's going to be MA, AY, and then we know AX is going to be equal to zero because there's no X forces here. So we still need to calculate AY. So if we look at this distributed load here, we can simplify this and find the magnitude of it in order to find our support reaction. So if we do that, we know that this point here, this height here is 20 kilonewtons per meter, right? And it's over three meters. So if we do one half base times height, that's going to be one half times... 20 times 3, so it's going to be 20 times 1.5. That's going to end up being, a, this has a magnitude of 30 kilonewtons. So we know that. So if we have 30 kilonewtons going down, that also means that AY has to be 30 kilonewtons going up, so AY is going to be 30 kilonewtons. And we need to calculate our moment, right? So our moment is going to be going this way with the, the arrows I drew because we have forces going down here that's going to be causing this to rotate this way. So our moment needs to counteract that and go that way. And if we do that, this is pretty simple. It's just going to be 30 kilonewtons times 2 kilonewtons. So we know that our MA here is going to be 30 times 2, which is going to be 60 kilonewton meters, right? And that's going to be the way we drew it. We also need to think about here, we have distributed loads. And remember when we're using discontinuity methods, and the reason discontinuity functions are so beneficial to use is because we only have to write one moment equation for the whole beam. But one kind of caveat of that is that we need to extend those distributed loads, right? All, because discontinuity functions assume that once a distributed load starts, it goes to the end of the beam. So if it doesn't go to the end of the beam, we have to make it go to the end of the beam. So we're gonna need to extend basically extend this distributed load here all the way to the end of the beam, right? And so we're gonna have these arrows going down here all the way to the end on the top. So we have 20 is to three, right? So we can use some more triangles. So six meters across here, that's gonna be 40 kilonewton meters, right? And we also, since this distributed, this blue distributed load actually isn't there, we need to do a mirror image of it. So we need a mirror image of it so the top cancels at the bottom so that in reality, we use these still, this 20 kilonewton meter load here, this triangular load is the only one that's still applying. So we need to do a mirror image here. So I'm gonna do mirror image, right? And this is roughly there. And these are gonna be going up, right? Because this needs to be canceling out the top. So this distance here, this is 20. So this here, this is going to be 20. And I'm looking at this. I don't really know any of the, if I look at my moment relationships over here, I don't have anything for a trapezoid. So I'm going to split this up into a rectangle and then another triangle here. So this is going to be a height of 20 kilonewtons per meter. This total distance is going to be 40. But when we look at the triangle, this distance is still going to be, it's only going to be 20. So 
we kind of have all our pre-analysis done. We know our boundary conditions, we know our support reactions, and we have extended our triangles out. So now we can write the moment equation for the beam. So let's do that, all right? So we know that the moment here is gonna be equal to the EI times the second derivative of deflection. And so we need to kind of go step by step. So the first thing I wanna do is do this moment here. But this moment is going like this way over the beam, right? So if we remember, this is gonna be causing compression on the bottom. If we, you know, if we had a beam like this and we get it this way, right? It would deflect like this. That's gonna be a negative moment. So we need to write negative 60 kilonewton meters when we do our moment equation. So we're gonna write that using this part of our moment diagram part here. We're gonna write that M is gonna be equal to negative 60 and then x minus, so this is occurring at x equals zero, so it's gonna be x minus zero to the zero power because it's moment. And now we need to kind of do everything else here. So we need to do this concentrated load, this AY support reaction, which is gonna be 30 kilonewtons. So that's going up, so we're gonna write plus 30, x minus zero to the first power because we have first power here, right? And the next thing we need to do is do triangular distributed load. So we're going to say since this triangular load starts at x equals 0, our a is going to be 0, and we extend it all the way to the end of the beam. But remember for this, we don't use what our values up here is. We need to find the slope. So we need to find the slope of this, of this triangle here, so this m, because our moment equation is going to be m over 6. So our slope is going to simply just be 20 divided by 3, right? Because it's going up 20 over three meters. So our slope is going to be 20 over three. But that's not what we're going to write in our moment equation because our moment equation is going to be m over six. So m over six is going to be equal to 20 over, um, oh, I wrote six here. It should be, I made a mistake. It should be 20 over three, right? Our slope is 20 over three. Let's think ahead. We need to divide by six here, right? So it's going to be 20 over 3 times 6 is going to be 20 over 18, right? That's going to be our, what we write, and that's going to simplify to 10 over 9. So when we do this triangle distributed load here, we're going to write minus 10 over 9, x minus 0 to the third power. And we also now are at the point where we need to add back these things on the bottom that we added here. So let's do that. So we have split this up into a rectangle and a triangle. So I'm gonna do the rectangle first. So that's gonna be, if I look at my rectangle, it's gonna be w over two, x minus a to the second power. So our w is gonna be 20. So it's gonna be plus 20 over two, x minus, in this case, it's gonna be x minus three to the second power because this tri this distributed load starts at x equals three. And I also need to add back that triangle and that's gonna be that same slope as before. So it's gonna be 10 over nine. It's gonna be positive though, right? And it's gonna be x minus three to the third power. So that's gonna be our moment equation. And we think about units, this is moment. So that's gonna be, we have kilonewton meters for that. So now we need to integrate this to get the slope equation. So that's gonna be EI and the first derivative, because we're integrating with respect to X. So we just need to integrate everything here. So X minus zero is really just X, and X to zero is one, right? So this is just gonna be integrating negative 60 with respect to X. So it's gonna be negative 60 X plus we just see the integration now, I'll just write it out. 15x squared, right, minus, we have 10 over nine, to the third, so we're gonna integrate this, this is gonna become a four, and then that's gonna be 10 over uh, four times nine, which is gonna be 10 over 36. And you could simplify that further if you want, but it's not really necessary at this point. This will be minus 10 over, 10 over 36, and x minus zero is really, hold on, 
sorry about that. X minus zero is really uh, just X. So we can just write X to the fourth power, right? And then we need to integrate this. So 20 over two is really 10, right? So, or we could just leave it like that, right? And that's gonna be plus, um, so it's gonna be 10 over, uh, no, it's gonna be 20 over six, if we just leave it as that. 20 over six, x minus three to the third power, right? And then we have this triangular load again, so that's gonna be the kind of the same deal. And let's just get rid of that. And that's gonna be plus 10 over 36, That's going to be to the fourth power, and we have a plus since we're integrating plus a constant. We're going to call that c1. Now I just need to integrate this one more time to find the deflection equation. So that's going to be ei times y, right? So that's going to be negative 30x squared plus 5x to the third minus, so 36 times 5 is going to be 180, so it's going to be minus 10 over 180 x to the fifth, plus, this is going to be 26 times 4 is 24, so 20 over 24, x minus 3 to the fourth power, plus 10 over 180, again, x minus 3 to the fifth, and we're going to integrate this constant, and then we're going to have a second constant, C2. So again, units here for slope, that's going to be kilonewton meters squared, because we're integrating with respect to x, and this is going to be kilonewton meters to the third. So now we need to find our constants again. So let's go back to our boundary conditions. So we know that at x equals zero, y equals zero, and at x equals zero, the slope equals zero. So I'm gonna to wanna to start with this slope one first because I have one less constant in my slope equation. So if I plug in x, y equals zero, this left side goes to zero here, and then x equals zero. So this is zero, this is zero, this is zero. This is gonna be zero because x minus a is negative zero. So my c1 here for my boundary conditions, we're gonna get c1 equals zero. And let's do the same thing with this boundary condition here. So at x equals zero, y equals zero, y equals zero, 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 and then we have c1x, so that's gonna be zero. So I'm also gonna get that c2 is equal to zero. So in this case, finding the boundary conditions really isn't too bad. So now that we know the boundary conditions, all we need to do net, the rest of this is we wanted to find what the maximum deflection is, so what this value is. So we know that's gonna occur at the end of the cantilever beam, so that's gonna be x equals six. So we're just gonna plug in x equals six to this equation, and we're gonna use our deflection equation here, right? So let's just plug in x equals six here. We're gonna move ei over to the other side here, so we're just gonna be left with y is equal to one over ei. And that's gonna be times, so we're gonna get y over equals one over ei, and that's gonna be times multiplied by, um, and we'll do bracket here, negative 30, and we're doing x equals six, so six to the second power, plus five times six to the third power, minus 10 over 180, and that's gonna be six to the fifth, plus 20 over 24, six minus three to the fourth, that's really gonna be three, minus 10 over 180, six minus three to the fifth, and then C1 and C2, these are both gonna be zero, so we don't have to worry about those. Right, so we're gonna get y is equal to, if we solve all this out, we're gonna get y equals to negative 351 kilonewton meters to the third over e times i. So that's gonna be what our y equation is gonna be here. But if we wanna solve for the actual y value, let's go look, come back and see what our i and our e were. 
right? So, so we know our I and our E, our I is going to be 113.6 meters, and that should be to the fourth, the four didn't transfer down, and our E is 200 gigapascals. So a gigapascal is 10 to the ninth pascals, and a pascal is a newton over meter squared. So we have meters, meters, so that's good, but we have a newton and a kilonewton, right? So we're gonna need to change this top part into newton meters to the third. So we're gonna write negative 351 times 10 to the third, right? And that's gonna be newton meters to the third power over E times I. So E is gonna be 200 times 10 to the ninth newton over meter squared. And then I is 113 times 10 to negative six meters to the fourth power. So this here, meters to the fourth power, it's gonna cancel here. So this is gonna become a two, right? Our newtons are gonna cancel, so we're gonna be a meters to the third over meters squared. So that's just gonna be leaving us with a meter, which is what we want. And we're gonna get that Y is gonna be equal to 0 0.0155 meters, and that's gonna be negative, right? So that's gonna be going down. And if we convert this to millimeters, we're gonna get Y equals to 15, 0.53 millimeters, and that's gonna be going down. So that's gonna be our total deflection. So this number here is gonna be 15.53 millimeters. So that's how we do this problem. Uh, hopefully if you just get away from this that we have to extend here our distributed loads, and then pretty much after we do that, the rest of the problem is just kind of going through the math. So hope that helps.